Hi everyone. The next four videos are uh, uh, just a brief introduction to abstract algebra and groups. Um, as I promised in the video about um, elliptic curves and the group law. So if you're not familiar with groups, then uh, these will give you a basic introduction. And actually, uh, I went into quite a bit of detail. So I've split it up into four different videos. Uh, the first one, which is this one, is the axioms that make a group and a few examples. The next one is some elementary properties that you can derive from those axioms. Uh, then I talk about finite groups. And finally, um, an example, the dihedral group of uh, order six, which um, are the rotations and flipping of a, of a triangle. You've probably heard of that. So, um, OK, without further ado, we'll start with part one. Abstract algebra, I think, is really interesting. Um, the motivation for it is they started by just looking at uh, our existing numbers, integers and real numbers and rationals and so on, and they tried to literally abstract some properties from them. And then after they did that, they realized that the rules that work for our number system actually have way... The, the structure is far deeper than it looks like at first, and you can use these structures in uh, a lot of ways, including, of course, elliptic curves. So what they wanted to show, what they, the question that they asked was, uh, how do you solve an equation like um, 5 plus x equals 2? So this is just basic junior high or high or junior high level um, algebra, maybe even grad, grade school algebra. So we just want to figure out what, what's required to find x, right? So the first thing we know is that you can add something to both sides. That doesn't change the equality. So if we add minus 5 plus x equals minus 5 plus 2, uh, and that's just the uh, you know property of adding to both sides, then we can, uh, so we added, we added the, um, the minus five to, to what was already there. So then we can um, change the parentheses we know, plus five plus x equals minus five plus two. That's just the associative property. And then, uh, Minus five is the inverse of um, minus five is the inverse of five. What's that mean? That means that it equals zero plus x equals minus five plus two. So that's the um, the inverse property. And then zero plus any number is just itself. So we have x equals minus five plus two. Uh, that's the identity. And then finally, just calculate what minus 5 plus 2 is, and we get that minus 5 equals, uh, or that, that x equals minus 3, computation. Okay, this is what we all learned in grade school or junior high, and we even learned these axioms uh, about the, um, the integers. What we were really doing was learning an example of um, abstract algebra. So what they did after that is to, to abstract these rules for um, any set. So what a group is, they just basically defined a group based on what we just looked at. So groups are any set S. with a binary operation. Such that the following is true. Uh, and we usually call for now, we're going to call the operation um, just an asterisk, okay, because it can be anything here, it was pluses, but it doesn't have to be it, it's any operation where these the following things hold true. So one, uh, the uh, operation is uh, closed. Uh, 
or that the set S is closed under the operation. Uh, two, the operation is associative. Three, uh, there's an identity element. So that means that there is an element in your set such that if you do the um, operation on any element in the set, you get back the same element. And four, each element has an inverse. So again, with um, integers, uh, we all know what the what the inverses of every number is. The inverse of minus three is three. The inverse of five is minus five, and so on. What that means is it, it uh, if you um, add five to minus five, you get back the identity, right? So these are the properties that make a group, a set with a binary operation that have these four uh, uh, axioms hold is a group. Now, you'll notice there's one thing that we all learned in grade school that's missing here, which is the commutative property. So there are sets that have the commutative property, meaning um, a plus b equals b plus a. But as you can see here, we didn't need the commutative property to do to solve this equation. And uh, commutativity is something that that a lot of groups have, but it's not necessary. So that's an additional um, it's an additional uh, property that's not fundamental to a group. So there are commutative groups, or they're also called abelian groups. There's a, a mathematician named Abel that did a lot on that. That's why they, they're named after him. So abelian means commutative. Okay. So um, the interesting thing is then there's a whole lot of groups even that we're familiar with. If we look at rational numbers, just the positives, okay? So greater than zero. They also form a group over or under multiplication. So if you think about that, that means that, that any rational times any other rational always equals another rational. Uh, if they're all positive. The reason for that is that if any of them are zero, then we all know uh, you can't have zero in the denominator. So uh, that's closure, right? We know it's associative. Um, is there a... Uh, is there an identity? Of course, it's the same one as always. A over B times one equals A over B. And is there, um, and every uh, fraction has uh, an inverse, right? You just, just take the reciprocal. A over B times B over A equals AB over AB. So that equals one, right? One half times two equals one. So uh, this is the identity, that's the um, inverse. So we have the four uh, axioms. So rational numbers over um, positive rational numbers also form a group. And in this case, the binary operation is multiplication instead of, um, instead of addition. But what's interesting is integers are not Uh, a group under multiplication. Why? Because if the identity in, if the multiplicative identity of the integers is one, just take five as an example, Five doesn't have an inverse because what's the inverse of five? It's actually one fifth, but that's not. Uh, but one fifth is not an element of the um, integers. 
So this is an example of something that's not a group. Um, so the groups that we've been talking about, of course, the rational numbers are also, um, the, the whole rational numbers are also an, a, a, a group under addition, the same way that the, um, that the uh, integers are, so are the reals, and so on. But all of these groups have been um, commutative. So let me just show you one uh, group that is not commutative, just so we have an example that, that this commutative property is not necessary. It's, it's not, we're not just being argumentative by saying that uh, groups don't have to be commutative because some important groups are not. So uh, a very important group is GL, N, comma, and then some field, say R. This means the uh, general linear uh, group of degree N over the reals in this case. Uh, that is N by N matrices, invertible matrices. These form a group, but they are not commutative. Um, multi uh, oh, over, um, over matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is multiplication. Matrix multiplication is not commutative, but this does form a group. So um, we can show that. Um, we know that there's, we know that there's, uh, we know that matrix multiplication is associative. Um, we know that there's an identity. That's what. Uh, that's just a property of of um, square matrices. So, for instance, in a three by three, it's this is the the uh, for three. This is the identity matrix. So, we know. Because it's invertible, that means that there is a um, an inverse for your um, matrix that w that if you multiply, you'll get the um, you'll get the identity. So if we have a, that means that uh, say for a in um, let's just call this uh, let's call this set M. For A and M, we know that there exists an A, an inverted, which which the minus one means that it's uh, the reciprocal, right? Or the inverse, um, such that A times A to the minus one equals I to the N, okay? Um, so we know there's inverses, we know it's associative, we know there's an identity. The one thing we have to prove is that there's closure. So if, if we take two matrices that are in B, we know that there, uh, then we know that there exists an inverse to A and an inverse to B. So we can take, we have AB. If we multiply it by B, by the inverse of B times the inverse of A. We know it's associative, so we can rewrite that as right. We just rearrange the parentheses. And then we know that that's the identity. So we have A, I to the N, A to the minus one. That's the uh, the inverse property. We know that the identity property means if you're multiplying it, that it just equals what uh, you get back what you started with. That's the identity property. This cancels again. And you have an I you you have the uh, identity. So what did we show? We showed that if we start with multiplying a and b, then a and b also has an inverse, right? Specifically, this is the inverse. So for any two matrices, for any matrix A times B, 
there is an inverse for it, uh, the inverse of B times the inverse of A, which gives us the identity. That means that A, B will always have an inverse, which means that uh, it's closed under this operation. And that means that that was the last thing we had to prove, that it's, that it's closed. Every multiplication keeps you inside the, uh, keeps you inside the group. So uh, this is a group. Um, but again, this is an important, it's an important group and it's not commutative. So they're not all commutative. Okay, that is it for uh, part one, which is just the axioms and some examples as you just watched. So next up will be some elementary properties that we can derive from what we just learned. And then uh, we'll get into finite groups and uh, an example. Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe and please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.